What if you could escape the crowded campgrounds? What if your campsite could go on for miles and miles and miles? What if nature came to you instead of you having to go to it? What if you could avoid the noisy generators, nauseous fumes, and polluted air at popular campgrounds? What if the only sounds you could hear were birdsong and the breeze through the trees? What if the view from your campsite was free of man-made structures like signs and buildings? What if there was no camping fee? Is this a fairy tale? Nope, it's called boondocking, and it's the most adventurous and rewarding form of RV camping. The essence of boondocking is camping in a wilderness setting, with a front row seat to the sights and sounds of nature. It's leaving the campgrounds and the distractions behind. What you haven't left behind are the comforts of home. Your kitchen, sofa, bed, and bathroom are right at your fingertips. Roughing it was never so comfortable. Once you try it, you'll soon realize that boondocking truly is the pinnacle of RV. Before the invention of the campground, everyone who camped went boondocking. Camping without campground hookups is what RVs were originally designed to do. The first RVs were quite bare bones, without many of the features found today, and they happily boondocked with them. Today's RVs are much better equipped for boondocking and much more comfortable. Features and available equipment like large battery banks, solar panels, wind generators, large freshwater and wastewater holding tanks, microwave ovens, refrigerators that run off propane or super efficient electric refrigerators, catalytic heaters, swamp coolers, and other gadgets make RV boondocking as comfortable as a full service camper. When boondocking, you are totally self-sufficient, relying on your RV systems and the supplies you brought along. You'll want to be adequately prepared with fully charged house batteries, plenty of propane, water, and food. Of course, just like tent camping, bring clothing suitable for the weather forecast, flashlights, a lighter or matches, and some emergency supplies should you become stranded or injured, as help could be miles away. So, where on earth can you go RV boondocking? Well, here in the United States, we are lucky to have millions of acres of federal public lands, much of which are open to boondocking. There is also state land, such as state forests, state game and fish areas, and some state parks that are open to boondocking. Wherever you see or hear the term dispersed camping, take note. Dispersed camping is the term used by federal agencies, like the BLM and Forest Service. It means camping outside of developed recreation facilities where no hookups or services are available. In other words, boondocking. Most BLM and Forest Service land is open to dispersed camping. The Bureau of Land Management oversees a whopping 245 million acres of public land. Most of this land is in the western United States, including Alaska, and is predominantly composed of extensive grassland, forest, 
high mountain, arctic tundra, and desert landscapes. Some of the best RV boondocking campsites I've found have been on BLM land. Much of it is open country, where you'll have an excellent view of the scenery. Finding a place to camp is often very easy once off the highway and on a dirt road. Usually the camping limit on BLM land is 14 days within a 28 day period. After 14 days, you must move outside of a 25 mile radius before you can camp again. More public land can be found in our national forests and grasslands which total 193 million acres. There are pristine boondocking campsites on these lands and recreational opportunities abound. Finding a place to RV camp in a national forest can be more challenging than on BLM land. Forest service roads usually meander through mountainous terrain, making them more difficult to navigate. Trees and overhanging branches can be a problem for larger rigs. If you rely on solar to charge your batteries, it can sometimes be difficult to find a campsite with enough sunlight. Be sure to pick up a free motor vehicle use map at the ranger station before heading out into the forest. This map will show you which roads are open to motor vehicles, but more importantly, it will show you which roads have dispersed campsites. While viewing the map, take note of any dots shown along the road. These dots indicate that there is a pullout or dispersed campsite in that area. This can save you much time and trouble as you can simply avoid those roads that are not dotted and do not have campsites. In the end, it might be more work but the rewards of finding a picture-perfect campsite amidst a lovely forest, mountain overlook, or on the edge of a forest meadow make it all worthwhile. Over 550 national wildlife refuges and thousands of wetlands are managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Many refuges allow dispersed camping Hunting is often permitted on these lands, so you may want to avoid RV boondocking during hunting season. Some national monuments permit dispersed camping. Three that come to mind are Ironwood Forest National Monument and Agua Fria National Monument in Arizona and El Melpaiz National Monument in New Mexico. The BLM manages several national conservation areas that are also open to dispersed camping. Your state may own land which is open to the public and where dispersed camping is allowed. In Arizona, you can purchase a state land recreation permit for a small fee, which enables you to camp on state trust land. Many state forests allow dispersed camping and boondocking. Some have rustic campgrounds and are perfect for boondocking. A quick online search by state can show you if state forests are open to camping near you. State game and fish areas may also allow camping, such as nature preserves and wildlife areas. A state atlas may show these sites you can also do an online search for your state's game and fish areas. Believe it or not, you can even go boondocking in Florida. Florida has several designated wildlife and environmental areas and wildlife management areas where primitive camping is allowed. Some state parks are open to boondocking. Anza Borrego Desert State Park in Southern California is one. This expansive state park has undeveloped campgrounds where there is no camping fee and no services. There are also many dispersed campsites scattered throughout the park. Here 
here are some tips for locating great RV boondocking campsites. State atlases from Benchmark and Delorme are great to start with, as these usually show public lands. BLM and Forest Service maps will show you more detail, along with some back roads. USGS topo maps, or topo mapping software, is great for zeroing in on a location and getting a lay of the land. Last but not least, I wouldn't go anywhere without using Google Earth to view satellite images of the area. The satellite view can show you roads that may not be on your map. In fact, the images are so detailed, I found several campsites solely using Google Earth, without ever having been to the area. You can tilt the view to get an idea of the train, and see just how level that potential campsite might be. Contact the local public land office, ranger station, or visitor center for information on dispersed camping in that area. The rangers will know where some of the best campsites are. Many federal agencies, such as the Forest Service and BLM, will have this information on their websites. Choose a base camp where you can begin further exploration of the land. This could be an easy to find campground where you can stay until you find the perfect boondocking campsite. Explore the area with your tow vehicle, towed, mountain bike, or motorcycle, seeking out potential RV boondocking campsites. Keep an eye out for small side roads, which are easy to miss. Drive slow and watch for faint dirt roads branching from the main road. These often dead in at a spot where others have camped before. If you think you found a suitable RV boondocking campsite, here are some things to consider before bringing in the big rig. Are there any trees or low hanging branches in the way? Do you notice any dead branches or snags that might fall during high winds? Is the site reasonably level does the site have good drainage? Or is there a possibility of flooding? Will dense tree cover shade your solar panels? And lastly, is the view drop dead gorgeous? Not essential, but that's something to strive for. Not only is RV boondocking a fun and low cost activity, it's also easy on the environment. You're using a fraction of the water a typical household uses, creating far less wastewater. You're using much less electricity and that electricity can come from solar or wind power. There are other ways you can minimize your impact on the environment. Practice Stealth camping. When you find the perfect RV boondocking campsite, keep it that way. Before you leave, make it appear you never arrived. Remove all traces of trash, camping equipment, and campfires. Camp at least 100 feet away from a water source, such as a river or lake. Do not wash anything in a water source or dump dishwater near a water source. Use biodegradable soap and at least 100 feet from a water source. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. If you create a campfire ring, scatter the rocks and cold ashes afterwards and return the site to its natural state. Use only downed and dead wood for campfires. Don't cut down trees or branches. Pick up any trash left by previous visitors. By taking care of the environment, we can give RV boondocking a good name.
and keep our cherished public lands open for the enjoyment of future generations. Stay safe out there and enjoy RV boondocking. It doesn't get much better than this.